Welcome back to this week's, well it's not a review, it's a buyer's guide. And especially with buyer's guides being rather bitty, if you want to navigate around this video and you want to skip different bits, down below in the description there are hot links, I think is the sexy term for them. And you click on those chapter headings, you can move around this video at will. See you there. Now, have you ever put off a job and then put it off again and once more for good luck? Tuesday, definitely Tuesday. I'll reserve time. Tuesday. Then Wednesday rolls up and the job is still there. Well, that's the basis of this video. The original Budget Vinyl System Buyer's Guide video was published around this time of the year in core, 2000. And 19. And that original video is now out of date for reasons I'll go into in a moment. Now, various viewers have coughed politely and noted the fact that I'm only now rolling up my sleeves on this one, so apologies all round. Actually, though, what an update allows me to do is to add that correction, but also, in addition, enhance the guide itself and broaden it out a tad to help more people. So, there's my penance. It's a sort of community service in video form. What am I doing here? I'm sure you've asked that question yourself, but I'm talking about this particular video. I'm going to list a vinyl-based hi-fi system. So that means a turntable, an amplifier, and a pair of speakers, I'm trying to keep it fairly simple. Total price for this loss? Well, I'm aiming at around £800 in total ish extras well yes there is cabling although if you can find good deals for the main components then maybe you can squeeze the cabling into that 800 pound budget there's a few other extras too like stands for your speakers maybe postage if you buy online for example but i'm focusing really on the essentials here just to get you up and running you can finesse later on that £800 figure is the core budget for the three main components, give or take a pound or three. Now, if you would like to see me publish other guides, a different guide, one that might benefit your good self and help you in your own purchase decisions, then plant a comment in the, well, comments section, I suppose you'd call it, and I might produce a guide based on that very suggestion. And if I do create a guide based on your suggestion, then, well, look, I'll sort it on Tuesday, okay? Definitely Tuesday, because I can make some free time then. Really, Tuesday. But back to this one, and I did talk about enhancing this particular guide. So how exactly am I going to do that? Well, the original guide offered a single belt-driven turntable an integrated amplifier with a built-in Ferno amplifier to save cash, plus a pair of stand-mounted speakers. Now, as this is a vinyl-orientated guide, I'm going to give you a few turntable alternatives in this modified, brand new, shiny bias guide. Now, in this guide, the speakers and the amplifier will be a constant. I will only be changing the turntable to aim the system at different types of hi-fi users. So on that basis, let's run backwards, shall we? And let's begin with the speakers. Mm. 
And for those speakers, I am choosing the Q Acoustic 3020 speakers. These are stand mounted speakers and they are not the newer 3020i's. Why am I picking the 3020s as opposed to the upgraded i models? Well, the 3020s are cheaper. I originally reviewed them in 2016, I think, for my website. And I think there's a review on this channel of them. Go back a bit. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. If I do find a review, I'll stick it up there. Otherwise, my finger is pointing at absolutely nothing. I know I've done the eyes. Did I do the 3020s as well? Pretty sure. As I say, I'll put a link up there if I have. Anyway, back then, back in 016, I declared my undying love for the things and I gave them an award-winning rating. The speakers themselves feature a paper and aramid mix in the mid-bass unit. And what's aramid, you might be declaring? Well, think Kevlar, that kind of substance. So this is a bit of a mix, really, for the old mid-bass unit. We're looking at basically a paper cone with a few drops of aramid just to stiffen the old spine. Up top is a 21mm soft dome polyester weave tweeter, which back then, when the speakers were released, was brand new at that moment. This tweeter is a two-in-one concentric model, and it comes with a ring radiator, and it's backed by a large ferrite magnet. Now, I've seen these speakers on sale in Amazon for £149, but... If you want to chance your arm on eBay for a lot less, then they're available there on auction. Even at 149 though, these speakers offer amazing value. You get an awful lot for not too much cash. Basically, the amplifier is why I'm doing this updated video in the first place. In the OG video, I recommended the Cambridge Topaz AM10 integrated amplifier. Now, that model has been deleted and that has caused all kinds of confusion for every YouTube viewer who has seen the original video since. So, let's do something to fix that, shall we? There is, in fact, a direct replacement from the same company. Now, I was going to recommend the Cambridge AXA35 integrated amplifier for £299, which features a built-in phono amplifier. But that model, so I've been told, has apparently fallen victim to the worldwide chip shortage as so many other pieces of technology has. And that makes buyer's guides like mine a tougher proposition. However, we'll get there, we'll get there. So that particular amplifier, it won't be in stock until the new year. When exactly in the new year? I don't know. It could be January, it might be later. But of course, you may want to wait for the AXA35 and that's fine, and it's a fine design. It's a 35 watt integrated model with a built in phono amplifier. Now, ultimately, I prefer an external phono amplifier because, well, it sounds better, basically. And of course, you can add an external amplifier to the AXA35 as well. You can use the internal jobby for now, just to get you going. And then later on, you can upgrade to an external model, obviously for more money, but the option is there. So the AXA35 is a solid option, but as I say, it's out of stock until the new year. So what's the alternative? If you want to buy now or in time for Christmas, well, you can stick with the same company on this alternative, Cambridge, because there is a lower cost option. The downside is that the AXA25, which is my alternative, 
is lower powered. It offers 25 watts instead of 35. Now 25 watts should not be a problem for most people unless you have a large room and you want to fill that room with sound then maybe possibly kind of you know that may be an issue. However I've used 25 watt amplifiers with no issues at all. Now 35 watt amplifiers well they do give you a bit of extra confidence in the sound because the amplifier isn't straining as much, it has a lot of potential power behind it, it has that confidence as I say. On the other hand, the AXA25 does not include a built-in phono amplifier. So for £249, which is what this thing costs, you're going to have to get yourself an additional external phono amplifier. Now I hasten to add that the AXA25 is in stock now, you can buy it right now. But what of that external phono amplifier? Well I would look at the project Phonobox MM which you can pick up, well it's all over the place, you can pick it up on Amazon, you can pick it up on eBay, there's lots of buy it now shops over there, richer sounds in the UK, they have it it's everywhere. So £69 for that. Then grab a pair of interconnects from, well, QED off a good value. Try and get the best you can if you do have some extra pennies. I would suggest, for example, the performance audio models for £25 a pair. I would normally expect to pay for those. And if you're not too sure how to connect all of this gubbins, well basically you have your turntable and hanging off the back of that will be some phono cables. You plug those phono cables into your phono amp, in this case the project. Then you take your QED cables, you plug one end into that project phono amplifier and the other end goes into your Cambridge, into your main amplifier. And that's your little phono amplifier chain as it were. Now in the end if you compare the AXA35 setup with the AX25 setup, because the 25 demands you get the external phono amplifier and demands that you get some extra cabling, you end up spending maybe what, £44 more. There is that external phono amplifier sound quality bump though because having an external phono amplifier will enhance the sound quality from the off. So there's that. The choice is yours. You can either wait for a 35 to come back in stock with that extra power or right now you can pick up a 25 and the external phono amplifier which will give you great sound. You can pick that up right now. <laughs> Now brace yourself because I'm going to go off on a tangent. I want to talk about, well, I want to talk about how your hi-fi actually works and the importance of our next piece of equipment, the turntable. Or if you want to broaden this whole thing out, the source. The source is the most important part of your hi-fi. Any hi-fi, no matter how much it costs, the source well, it could be a streamer, it could be a DAC, it could be a CD player, or in this case, a turntable. The source is the thing that accesses the raw music data. This is the thing that first sees the musical information. A vinyl disc, a CD disc, raw data from a stream. Whatever it is, it's the source that sees this data. It's not the amplifier. It's not the speakers. So in our system here, in any system, it's the source that makes first contact with the music. So in our system, the first time our amplifier will see any music data at all is when the turntable 
hands it over. The turntable does the giving. The speakers don't see any musical information at all until the amplifier hands it over. So the speakers see this information third hand. The amplifier sees it second hand. Only the turntable has access to the actual music data. It's a kind of sonic pass the parcel. As it stands, if the turntable is the only part of your entire hi-fi that actually has contact with the raw musical data, then it's the turntable that should be, and is, the most important part of your entire hi-fi. Hence, if the turntable messes up, if it fails to extract enough information, then the amplifier is not going to make up for that later on. Where would that information come from? Thin air? Father Christmas? No, the amplifier is only getting its music data from the turntable, nowhere else. Same with the speakers. The amp and the speakers, well, they do their best with the information that's been handed on down. Then there's the cables, which also have the capability to lose or damage the quality of data during their role in the process, which is why cabling is important. So, in effect, the turntable has the only positive role in the entire hi-fi chain. The turntable scoops up new information. As for every other part of your hi-fi, well, their job is this. Don't cock it up. To repeat then, the amplifier, speakers and cabling, they don't create any information. They don't create detail. Their job is not to lose information or detail. It's that way around. They don't create. Their job is not to lose. So, on that note, let's move on to Mr. Positivity, shall we? I'm going to provide you with three turntables here, all priced around 300 to 350 pounds, just to keep on budget. Each has been selected to appeal to a particular type of user, three different users. First up, we're going to look at the guy who prioritizes sound quality. Sound quality and nothing but sound quality. My first choice is the Riga Planner 1. This turntable provides the best sonic performance of the three turntables listed here. It's a fully manual design. And well, with one major exception, it's pretty basic in its construction. To change the speed, you have to move the exposed pulley and move that belt from one notch of that pulley to an adjacent notch. This takes a second to do, but I do know people who just don't like doing that. It's a bit finicky, and they're a bit worried about the whole thing, to be absolutely honest. And if you're one of those people, then a Planner 1 is not for you. Now, yes, the Planner 1 is also, I don't know, a little spartan, you might say. Basic, relatively speaking, in its appearance, and lacking in a little bit of visual impact. But that's the general idea, if sound priority is your thing. By keeping it simple, Riga minimizes the damaging effects of vibration and high frequency noise. Also, because the plinth is made up of basic MDF and the platter is nothing special and the cartridge is nothing to write home about, it means that most of the budget can be spent on the wonderful tone arm. It's because of the tone arm why this turntable sounds so good. No other reason. That's where your money goes. If so, in conclusion, if sound is number one with you, look at a planner. One. Next up, the Audio Technica LP5X. Now, if sound is important, but you also want a robust, strong design with a visual sense of confidence plus a little help in terms of controls, then this direct drive design is for you. Compared to some Audio Technica designs I could name, the LP5X is actually rather purred down in terms of bling and in terms of features. For example, if you're looking for a strobe 
ringing the platter, then you'll be a long time looking. Now, yes, there's the usual tools you'd expect to find, such as the tone arm weight, the anti-skate wheel, the arm lift, but you also have the 78 RPM option. You have a removable head shell. You also have a built-in phono amplifier if you need that. There's also a USB port to rip your music to a data file. And there's also a very nice VM95E cartridge. Oh, and a rather friendly speed select and power switch. So if you want a perfect blend of sound quality along with features and facilities, the LP5X, that's the one to go for. My third choice is the Project A1. Now, both of the previous turntables I've talked about in this video are excellent and provide unique features that should appeal to a particular vinyl fan. Problem is, they don't cater for one important sector of the vinyl population. Those who prefer their turntables to be fully, and I emphasize the word, fully automatic. That is, those who prefer at the flick of one single switch for the tone arm to spring into life and to lift itself up in the air and to swing over to the start of the record, whether that record be 12 inch or seven, and lower itself upon said record surface and upon completion to lift itself again from that record surface and to shift back to the tone on cradle to settle itself down and to switch off the record player all without any interference from human beings. So as I say, in effect, to play a record from the A1, all you need to do is to flick one switch. That's it. The A1 will automatically put the tone arm on the record. It will lift it off again afterwards and it will tidy up after itself as well. Lots of people want a turntable that does just that. How do I know? Well, because I meet them here on YouTube or on social media elsewhere or via my website. Not everyone, it seems, enjoys breathing the refined air inside the hi-fi bubble. Some people want a nice system but really don't care that much for the whole hi-fi palaver. They want a nice sound and lots of automation to make their music playing tasks as smooth and minimal as possible. Now the A1 is by no means the best sonic performer here. In fact, it's the worst of the three listed here. But for an automatic turntable, it's the best design out there that I have heard at any rate. If you're looking for a good quality hi-fi system, you don't want to spend too much, but you still want quality and you don't want to go down the cheap and cheerful road, then I would look at a pair of Q Acoustic 3020 speakers for the amplifier. Well, as I say, the Cambridge AXA35 is out of stock right now, but if you want to wait until the new year, then yes, I can recommend that too. Comes with that extra power or the AXA25 amplifier, which will be plenty of power for most people, plus the enhanced sound quality from that external project phono amplifier. For the turntable, well, it depends who you are. Either a Riga Planner 1, if sound is top of the list for you, or an Audio Technica LP5X, if you want a blend of sound, plus features and facilities, or a Project A1 if you want a fully automatic turntable. Now that will cost you in and around £800, maybe less, depends on your shopping prowess. In addition, look out for the best quality QED cabling you can find. Now you'll definitely need a pair of speaker cables and possibly a pair of interconnects if you use an external phono amplifier. Now, I've talked briefly about the interconnects earlier on, but for the speaker cables, 
Well, I've seen decent XT25 speaker cables at around three and a half meters in length for between 50 pounds and 65 pounds. In addition, think about stands for your speakers. And if you can't afford them initially, then they are your first buy, your first upgrade after you buy in your hi-fi. Think solid and secure in terms of design when you are looking to buy. Designs that basically are not bendy or wobbly, not made out of kitchen foil painted black, in other words. And if you have any pennies left over or you find something nice down the back of the sofa, then look at a shelving unit for your turntable and amplifier. This will enhance sound quality still further because it will reduce vibration and resonance. It'll also keep everything level, which is a good thing. But this can be a later upgrade if cash is short. That's it, folks. Now, if you need more assistance, give me a shout in the comments and I'll help the best I can. If you haven't done so already, please, if you could, just down below here, click on the subscribe and like button. That'd be a big help for me and the channel. Check out the links below for my website and Facebook group and also Patreon. And just to remind you that part three of my hi fi tour is out now on Patreon. So check that out. It's exclusive to Patreon. I'll be back on Friday and I'll be back with a Hi-Fi News etc with lots of the usual goodies plus trivia because trivia is now back by public demand. So I'll see you then and I hope to have your company. Until then folks, bye bye for now.